In this uh, video tutorial of how to display your 3D models on a web page, um, this is kind of a pre-intro before I even get started. Uh, some of these meshes are not made by me. Some of these codes codes were not made by me. Um, this one here, I basically um, kind of scratched together, and you're more than welcome to uh, check it out and use it if you want to. No problem. And. Uh, I'm going to be getting in a little bit more in depth on a few things. I'm not going to get in full detail and uh, I might not even be 100% accurate. I'm going to try doing the best I can, but uh, you're getting ready to find out here after I pause the video and go into the next section. Oh, this is easy, and I'm going to show you how to display your 3D models on a web page. You're going to need to know a little bit about coding, but this is free. Um, this will allow people to uh, view your 3D models, move them around, have it rotated, uh, to change certain um, parameters on here, like uh, shaded or you know the wireframe or texture and facet or whatever now this one here is the Z logo so the trademark is from pick logic so credit to them for the Z logo and um, before I get started um, this plugin that you're gonna download is free it's called mesh to flash and this will allow you to display your models on a web page what's good about it is most uh, computers have uh, flash anyway and you don't need to have uh, any type of other plugin for this. Um, some other these these other 3D viewers, you got to have uh, maybe a new browser, or maybe they'll allow you to download a uh, different plugin. And some people don't want to do this. This is probably the most uh, common use uh, plugin, so this is going to work. Well, I'm not going to say 100%, but it should work for most browsers. So we're going to go ahead and go into the next step. All right, now you can uh, get part of the code here if you want to use this code. You can use any code that I got that I made. This is what I made right here. You can just right click and view source and then you can get the code from there. And then make you a simple one kind of like this. And actually you can make them even simpler. I kind of added these buttons which will uh, make things uh, more easier to do where you can switch things around. So um, to get this little mesh to flash plugin, the, there's going to be this little banner up in the right hand corner. Um, the this is the build in to mesh to flash. This banner will always be there and you cannot remove it. So don't ask me how to remove it. So when you click here, um, it's going to bring you to the uh, David uh, Laser Scanner um, website. Then you will go down to download and you'll press download. And you'll come all the way to the bottom of the page. It says mesh to flash here. Here's the version um, right here. And here's the instructions. So we're going to go to the uh, documents right here. And I'm just going to give you a brief overview of a few things. Because there's certain things that's um, going to make this work. And a lot of things um, might happen that will make you scratch your head because things are not working right. So I'm going to kind of point out a few things. All right, we're going to go down here to the little bit of the coding down here. Uh, you can put this coding uh, in an HTML uh, web page, and then you can actually put an iframe and embed your uh, HTML file inside an iframe. You can do that. All right, um, here's a few things um, you need to really take note of because uh, things may work and may not work, and sometimes uh, you'll be scratching your head and saying, "Oh, well, why isn't this working?" The main thing right here right now, well, if you're doing this from your desktop and trying to do a little test, this will not work off your desktop. You need to upload all this information to the server um, because this flash will not let you view it from a desktop. So forget about it. It's not going to work on your desktop. Uh, another thing is this is case sensitive. You can see uh, it's got upper and lower cases in the letters and uh, especially in the names right here 
uh, down here at the OBJ, the you know lowercase m, then uppercase m here. Uh, if your OBJ name is doesn't doesn't match the case sensitive here, it won't work. Uh, you can see here at the beginning the two m's here, one's lower, one's higher, so it won't view if it's like that. Another thing is. I use ZBrush and it's got the OBJ it ex, uh, exports when I'm done and uh, it always puts the capital O, capital B and capital J and if that's the case they're not matching it's not going to work. Uh, another thing is if the OBJ is all quads it's not going to work. Uh, it needs to be triangulated and um, I use ZBrush Decimation Master to do that. I like to keep all my OBJs around 500 KBs or less. Um, that way it'll load up a lot quicker in the browser and be able to view it. You don't want to upload a you know large megabyte file. Alright so basically um, this little highlight here if I um, this was an actual link. This would actually, even with the word OBJ at the end, this would be actually the link. And um, if you wanted to send it to somebody, but um, if you want to embed it in a HTML page or whatever, then you need to kind of use this whole code here like that. And you, got, you can get some like here. And uh, this one down here, this one's basically, uh, this code is for uh, forums. Uh, there's a lot of forms does not support the flash uh, tags here so probably won't use that a lot um, and let's go down here here's some of the parameters um, you'll be able to open up some of my codes and uh, see some um, I've took in some of the codes from um, another place that I seen some uh, coding from and all you gotta do is experiment with it and I'll show you that in just a second um, example here's the like the rotate and you can type in different numbers for the rotation you know like one or two and you can add some parameters so I'm gonna show you some samples here all right here's a sample right here it's the call the uh, mini 3d slider I didn't create the, all the code here but I uh, inserted these little HTML web pages right here and uh, probably not the best design because it's trying to load all these up at once but it was kind of cool another thing is to keep in mind I'm not 100% sure but if you look at the name this is the actually the folder where it's sitting at it's the real-time 3d underscore files I believe you need that name for that folder if the folders not named that um, I don't think these will work at all um, I think you need the um, folder name real-time 3d underscore files so if you have a different main folder and it's um, have a different name maybe it's not working because you need this name for the main folder and um, if we just select one here let's go ahead and just select it here and you're gonna get the raw code right here this is the raw code up here in the link and there's certain things that you can change here and this is where you can kind of experiment with so if I wanted to change the background color to a different color I will come in here press enter and then you can change like the background color you can change the rotation say I didn't want no rotation well type zero and when you link these you you this is your main link so that's when um, we get back here a little bit further that's why every time that you click one of these and go to something it's taking you to a link and I'm taking to a link where I got certain items set up and you can change all that if you want to On um, this mini slider, a lot of times um, it won't let you move this little slider until everything's loaded. But um, it's got all the options that uh, it'll tell you if you, you know, you can click and drag all these and move them around, which is really cool. And just move things around whatever you want. And you can zoom in and out with a scroll wheel. And whatever it says on here, it'll give you some options. 
All right, now here's another uh, example here, and uh, of course this one is in the real-time 3D folder, and I didn't make all uh, some of these meshes. These are by other people. Uh, I get credit to this one's Magadelia, I believe. Uh, if you click one of these buttons down here, it's probably going to take you to something else, which is not a mesh to flash. If it doesn't say David on here, it's not. Um, I'm not showing you that. What I like about this one here, um, I got a uh, zebra uh, snapshot pick in the background, and then it makes it look like the uh, mesh is actually in ZBrush moving around, which I thought was kind of cool. And like I said, you can do all kinds of things to, you know, adjust it. Uh, another little tip would be is uh, this one's got the uh, texture, or I can turn the texture on and off. And uh, now this has to have UVs for the texture to show. So uh, what I used on this was called a UV planer. And that's that type of UV for this texture to show. Now there, this sometimes does not take... Uh, different all types of uh, UVs and expect it to work in the web browser so but I do know UV planer is one that does work for this uh, if we look in the code here and we go down to the uh, source here and let me open this up quite a bit here um, here's the one I'm using a PNG file for this so if we select all the way here to the start to the finish and we'll paste and go here now there's the um, file right here it's actually uh, we come up here um, here is actually the end of the file here well, here's actually the name but here's the end of the file and if we just go ahead and delete that and press the go back one more and press enter then we don't have the uh, texture on it anymore um, you can put the MTL file I believe uh, and upload it and I don't even and I believe you don't even need to uh, when you do that it would automatically put the uh, texture on there but in some cases uh, let me paste this back in some cases when you export your MTL file um, most of them will try exporting with a bitmap BMP and uh, what you need to do is you need to convert your BMP into a PNG and open up your MTL file and you need to change the text from BMP or whatever it is back to PNG and once the MTL file is uh, uploaded I believe you I don't I'm not for sure, but I don't even think you need to set the end. When you select here, all the way up to your OBJ and press enter, um, then your uh, it will display the uh, texture still on there as the short link. All right, uh, I'll have some of these uh, links below the video that you're watching if you want to try them. Uh, check them below the video. I'll have at least three of them down there, so. You don't see all three kind of open it up down the bottom I don't know if you'll be able to see all the text but I should have all links and you can kind of test these out below the video uh, another thing is if when we're on this one page remember up at the uh, top of the link on one of the files I showed you that had that main uh, folder called uh, the uh, real-time 3d file folder well this doesn't have the name up there and remember I said you need that name for it to work well, actually, it's still in this code. If we right-click and go down to uh, view source here, um, it's just built embedded in, in this web page. But I still have that real-time 3D underscore files folder, and I believe that you need that folder the same name for all this to work. And you can um, you can adjust um, all kinds of things like the height and width. And if you're having any problems. Um, I come back to the video every now and then check for responses but I don't come back a lot but if you have a question um, go ahead and ask and I'll see if I can help you out if you're having problems or have any questions